Um, so, uh, Rachel, uh, can we make Paula McKluski uh, or Jonathan um, uh, co host as well, please? Okay, so without further ado, um, I want to welcome everyone officially to the second day of the NEARS boot camp for MCHB training programs. Very excited for today. Um, we'll start off with an introduction from AUCD staff. Um, and welcome to also introduce yourselves in the chat as well with your name, program, um, and uh, sorry, your your name program, um, and then um, uh, your your role at your program. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, so, just some uh, quick uh, ground rules today. We do have a high volume of content again today, uh, so please put any uh, questions into the chat. Um, and then uh, captioners and ASL interpretation are also provided today. Sessions will be recorded and archived. Um, if you have any questions, um, uh, please feel free to put those into the chat or raise your hand with the reactions. Um, we've listened to feedback from the first day, so we have tried to split up today's session a little bit more, um, provided more opportunities for questions. Um, and then a few more opportunity for, for breaks throughout the day as well. Um, and so uh, just a quick introduction um, from everyone. My name is Brandon Lewis. I am the data support manager with AUCD. Um, I support everyone with all of their questions in NEARS, and so it is my pleasure to introduce uh, my other colleagues, Jackie Siziak, Sana Klamova, and Rachel Miller. I'll let them introduce themselves now. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackie Sizia, and I'm the Senior Manager of ITAC, which also stands for the Interdisciplinary Technical Assistance Center on Autism and Developmental Disabilities. And uh, we support both LEND and DBP programs, as well as Autism Cares grantees. And I'll pass it to Oksana. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Oksana Klimova, and I'm Director of Web and IT Services at AUCD. And in my current position, I oversee development, architecture, and maintenance NIRS application and NIRS database. And I pass it to Rachel. <laughs> Hello, uh, I am Rachel Miller, and I'm a program specialist on the ITAC team. Uh, and today I'm helping running the slides. And if you have any questions, please let us know. And I do also want a quick note um, that we do have a guest speaker with us today as well. Um, if Danielle Weber would also like to introduce herself briefly. Hey everyone, sure, thanks Brandon. I am Danielle Weber. I am the USED Resource Center Senior Program Manager. The USED Resource Center at AUCD uh, provides training and technical assistance out to the USED network. So, perfect, thank you so much everyone for introducing yourselves. Uh, for those who are just now joining, um, feel free to put your um, name, um, your, your name, the name of your program um, and your role at, at your program as well. So a very warm welcome for day two of the NEARS boot camp. Um, so to run through uh, today, uh, today is really geared towards going through the NEARS boot camp um, in trainees and trainee surveys today. I mean, so that is what today is dedicated to. By the end of today's session, um, you'll learn how to locate NEARS resources on the AUCD website. You'll understand the differences between program year and fiscal year. You'll understand the different types of trainees, how to manage trainee records in NEARS, and how to manage trainee surveys. Going into today's agenda, um, we'll start off with the welcome introductions. 
Um, and then any questions and answers that you have from day one of the boot camp. Well, then we'll go all into uh, the definitions and discussion on program year versus fiscal year. And then an introduction to use said trainees versus LEND trainees. Um, we'll try to have a break around three o'clock. We are trying to be a little bit flexible. So um, the schedule will be a little bit tentative on breaks. Um, so just letting everyone know. Um, after um, our break, um, we'll go um, and manage and, and learn how to manage trainee records um, followed by another break. Um, and then we'll do trainee surveys. Um, and then there's some a quick e and there's a quick email tool that we would also like to discuss. Um, and then we'll go into homework and ne next steps for next session. Um, these slides will be shared after the meeting, um, and uh, we will be posting we will be posting the recording um, from day one of the boot camp um, by Friday of this week as well. Um, as with the previous um, days, we have a, a couple of helpful links for you, um, which you can um, find on screen, um, and we'll uh, point those out as we go through uh, the day as well. And so I wanted to start off today um, with uh, any homework review or any questions that anyone has um, from day one of the boot camp. Feel free to unmute yourself. Um, make sure uh, just accessibility um, considerations and make sure you say your name and, um, and so on and so forth. And we'd look forward to any questions you have. Brandon, I'd like yeah. to know what questions you received the most in the TA office hours that you held. This is Rachel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we had a, a couple of people um, ask about uh, the differences and the different um, profiles. Um, and then uh, we also um, had some people who uh, wanted to uh, talk about data management in each of the, the data sets as well, which we um, did discussed as a group. Um, the Office TA sessions are really kind of a, a collaborative space for everyone, which was really nice um, because it gave everyone a chance to kind of talk together um, and go through the um, different approaches that they have at their different programs. Uh, I wonder if um, Oksana, who is also there with me too, if she has anything else to add. Uh, I would encourage uh, everybody attend uh, TA hours, which is Thursday and Monday. Um, you can ask not only homework related question, but also just general question about NIRS or um, uh, anything NIRS related really. Um, nothing, I mean, it was questions that uh, Brandon already mentioned. Um, nothing else comes on, on my mind to bring up right now. Thanks so much, Oksana. Okay. Well, um, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, and so if no one has any questions from day one of the boot camp, um, then we'll go ahead and run into what we'll be discussing for day two of the boot camp then. Um, so we'll be bouncing back and forth as with day one between NEARS um, and the PowerPoint slides. Um, so um, there will be some transition times as we go back and forth. Um, just we, we wanted to start um, with kind of uh, diving into I mean, you've, you've heard these terms before program year and fiscal year. Um, and so what does that mean whenever we talk about that? Um, and so, first of all, federal reporting spans between July 1st and June 30th um, of the following year. And so whenever you're entering records um, into NEARS, um, those records should be entered between those for, with those two dates in mind. 
Um, HRSA and MCHB may refer to this time period um, as the period of performance um, as noted in the Notice of Funding Opportunity, NOFO, um, which is awarded uh, whenever you are um, awarded a, a, as, as a program. Um, for example, the period of performance for this current grant cycle is July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023, just to give an example. And so whenever we're talking about this um, in, in NEARS, um, a program year um, is going to be notated um, with the year that the training program begins. And so in our uh, previous example, July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023, we would note that as PY 2022, because that is the time frame that it starts with. And fiscal year, that is the time frame in which the, the training program ends. And so whenever we're talking about, again, with our previous example, June 30th, 2023, that's the year that it ends. So that same time frame would be noted FY 2023, um, whenever we're talking about that. Um, and so again, just in the example that we're using, um, PY 2022 indicates program year, um, it is the year in which it begins um, in 2022. Um, in contrast, the time frame between July 1st, 2022 and June 30th, 2023, which ends in 2023. I mean, so we would note that as FY 2023. And you don't always have to remember that, that's okay. Um, and so I know we have a lot of um, you know, new programs on the line today. Um, and so that difference is always noted at the very top of every page in NEARS as well. And you can see that on the banner um, that we have at the very top of the slide. And we'll point that out when we go into NEARS a little bit later today. I wanted to pause here in case if there were any questions about that. Do we have any questions in the chat? Brandon, this is Jackie. I just wanted to clarify for folks, um, and thank you to Robin for Robin Shulha for putting it in the chat that you know those are the dates for LEN programs. You really need to refer to your notice of funding opportunity um, for what your program applied to to know what is your period of performance. Um, so that may some programs may I think. Robin already specified they may start in June for some programs. So really making sure that you're very clear on where your period of performance begins and ends. That's it. Yep. yep. Thank you, Jackie and Robin. Okay. And um, thank you, Jackie, for posting the um, slides in the chat as well. Okay, um, so uh, Danielle Weber, um, who is our guest speaker today, she's going to give us a little bit of introduction um, for USAID trainees, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, LEND trainees and, and the difference between the two of them. Um, Danielle, go ahead and kick it off for us. Great, thanks, Brandon. Um, and as Brandon mentioned, I won't take too much of your time um, this afternoon. This is a NEARS um, bootcamp for LEN programs. However, um, because there are so many co-located USED and LEN programs that are participating in the bootcamp, we wanted to take a little bit of time to highlight the fact that there is a distinction um, between USED trainees and LEND trainees. Um, definitions, terms are different and wanted to make sure that you all have access to USED specific resources um, related to USED trainees so that when you hop into NEARS, you know who you're counting for what um, and how everything should be recorded. Um, so Brandon, you can advance to the next slide. Um, so naturally, you know, with the different um, two different funders, as I said, the term and the definition trainee means something slightly different um, when referring to a LEN program um, than it does when referring to a USED program. And along those lines, when it comes to counting, um, you know, who goes into NEARS um, and, and for federal reporting. 
So the DD Act, um, which authorizes the USAID network, requires that the work of the USAID is aligned with both the purpose of higher ed and also assist in the implementation implementation of the purpose of the DD Act. Um, those four items that you see numbered on the slides are referred to as the USAID core functions. Uh, the USAID core function that we are talking about specifically when we talk about USAID trainees is that first one on the slide, interdisciplinary training, including continuing education. Um, the other core functions are community service, research, Research and information dissemination. All of these core functions are required. Um, USEDs are required to um, be participating um, in fulfilling, participating in and fulfilling all of these core functions, with the exception of model and demonstration services, which is an offshoot of uh, community services you see there um, on the screen. So um, the first core function, as I mentioned um, on the next slide, is uh, interdisciplinary pre-service prep. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about you said trainees. Uh, the definition of interdisciplinary pre-service preparation has been provided there on the screen. Um, there's also a resource document that I'll point you to in a second um, that has these definitions on it, so you don't need to take a screenshot or anything. Um, you said trainees are split into two buckets. There are intermediate trainees and long-term trainees. Um, so they're split depending on the number of contact hours that they will have um, from participating in a USED training program. So the intermediate trainees um, have 40 to 299 contact hours. Long-term trainees are any trainees over 300 contact hours. Um, and then lastly, just two um, important resources that I want to point you in the direction of for some further reading. One is the USED logic model, which exists on the USED Resource Center website. That has definitions of everything um, in it. Um, so it has the USED logic model with definitions of all of the terms. The second resource that is really important as it relates to the data that you are populating um, NEARS with that eventually for the USED programs becomes your annual PPR is a document that has a crosswalk of the USED logic model with the relevant data points in NEARS. Super, super helpful. Um, we're not going to pull it up on the screen and show you today, but I will put some links into the chat in a second here so that you can um, save those and, and take a look for, um, you said, trainee reporting in NEARS. Um, and I think that's it. I know Jackie is going to um, say a few things about LEND trainees. Okay, so thank you so much, Danielle. Um, and so if we could um, go on to the next slide, please. Um, and so that's really kind of an overview um, for um, you, you said trainees like Danielle said. Um, MCHB uh, or, or uh, Lynn Lin trainees, sorry, um, specifically, um, because you said and, and lens um, are, can, can be co-located, um, like like Danielle said, um, and so those re requirements for for what counts as a Lynn trainee, um, you really want to reach out to your MCHB and HRSA project officer if you're unsure whether a trainee will count um, a, as a Lynn trainee or 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 not, um, but. And, and you can always refer to your um, Len Nofo as well, which we have um, a link here um, for for everyone uh, to um, review it if you, if if you're not familiar with it as well. Um, so, Jackie, do you um, have anything else um, to add for uh, for for that? Um, because um, Lend uh, 
to train through an MCHB and HRSA, um, they have a, a much different requirements like experimental learning, um, didactics, um, and other requirements um, that they're also required to engage in in order to count as a LIN trainee as well, um, which is very different from USED trainees. Thank you, Brandon. I don't have too much to add. I just want to emphasize that um, we do receive this question a lot. And um, I would say some of the questions that we receive are re regarding, well, this USA trainee is also a LEND trainee. And sometimes that is the case, but I would be very careful and making sure that you're meeting um, the guidelines for both. And so I know that Danielle went through some guidelines Really, the LEND NOFO, you should be reading very carefully and making sure that if you have a USA trainee that is also a LEND trainee, that it's meeting all the requirements of LEND. So that is, I would say, a very important document. If you haven't read it as a data coordinator, is making sure that you're understanding the difference between the two. Um, we're not going to go in depth about all the requirements for a LEND trainee, but we just really want to take time to address this because sometimes we receive questions and um, and Brandon may, may um, you know, it, let me know if this is correct, but I feel like more LEND trainees may count as USED trainees than USA trainees may count as LEND trainees. <laughs> um, and so, again, I'd be very careful about reading the NOFO. Um, and I just wanted to pay attention to the chat. So I see that Robin from MCHB mentioned um, earlier to Danielle's slide, if I can see how this could be confusing, we at MCHB training space separate training from CE, which is another important point. Um, again, we're gonna be very focused on the trainee data set today, but um, that is something that we'll need to um, talk through further when we get to other aspects of NEARS. So for MCHB, training refers to those in an educational setting, CE refers to those in the field or in service. So that's a very important note that you just might, may want to jot down for later if you're co-located with any USED. Um, and then I see that Amy had wrote that USED and LEND trainees are very confusing and it's hard to keep them straight when it comes down to what's what. And I'm so thankful I'm not the only one who has to make that decision on what bucket to dump people in. Yes, um, I understand that it can be very confusing. So it's very important that, again, um, reference the materials that Danielle provided and also reference the, the NOFO. And of course, as a data coordinator, you're not making that decision alone. You're making that decision with um, your training director or the, the director of your program. And just wanted to note Robin's point of the number of LEND trainees is really critical as your funding is related to the number of long-term trainees. Yes, that's a very important point. It might be good just to pause and see if there's additional questions now that we have Danielle here. Can you just uh, clarify exactly what you're supposed to do if you have, if you're both part of a LEND and a USED? What, how should you, what does that mean you should do exactly? Do you mean if your trainees are both a LEND trainee and a USED trainee? Or if your center is a, if your center is both a lend and a USED, that is very common that they're in both, and there's not necessarily, if I'm understanding your question, anything to do. But it is important when you're entering data in NEARS that you're meeting the federal requirements for both. So there's different requirements if you are part of a USED versus if you are a lend program and MCHB requirements versus the funder ACL. So in NEARS, the great thing about NEARS is that when you are a LEND and a USED, you kind of can see everything together. Um, so you're able to really tell, you know, you're able to see all your USED trainees, all your LEND trainees, enter data um, for all the data sets for both. Um, but it's just important that, of course, we have guidance throughout NEARS and references to these different funding opportunities, it's just important that you're able to distinguish between what is a LEND trainee and what is a USED trainee. And I'm not okay. sure, Danielle, if you have anything to add to that or if that was unclear. And then I just wanted to point out that Robin just noted that LEND project officers should know who is considered a LEND trainee, and it's very critical to distinguish and count properly. 
So again, a lot, this is all going into your performance um, report for your reporting period. And so it's important that you're reporting accurate numbers. And sometimes that can be what we find um, for those that have both LEND and you said that sometimes maybe it's double counting some things. And so it's just important that um, not to say that some things can't be double counted, but making sure it's meeting the requirements of both. And Danielle, I'm not sure, if, um, or Giassi, if you have a, a follow up. I, I think um, that makes sense. I, I mean, I guess I was, yeah, and I think that, I think I got that. I think, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about like when I, as a, as a faculty person, enter data about my own activities that's that's different that's not the same as talk dealing dealing with trainees that's different yes okay that's different okay not good. I, I think i get it i get it then thank, thank you thank you and i saw that i misspoke <laughs> i meant project directors again project directors and your training directors will have will have that information um danielle good uh yeah. has any has, does sorry excuse me but my hand has been up for for I I my, my comment was 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 just related to this question and that usually that um um my my this is Stuart my um usually um we we uh you my you said doesn't um doesn't have um trainees who are both you said and Len trainees at the same time, but it does have Len trainees who used to be you said trainees and vice versa. So but we but we all but we always know who is which one is who um who is who which one is which at any given time. Thank you for sharing that Stuart. That's a very important distinction and um, apologize that I did not see your hand raised. Um, so again, just because you are both part of a lend and you said to Stuart's example doesn't mean that there's <laughs> there's sometimes confusion. Like sometimes it's very distinct. Sometimes there's you said trainees that later become lend trainees, vice versa. Um, so thank you, Stuart, for sharing another example from a program. Danielle, I just want to make sure if you had anything to add or, or to clarify that you had a chance to do so. Well, just real quick, I don't want to get too far off of the trainee topic, but I thought that the individual who asked a question before Stuart may be getting at um, something even more basic. And so I just wanted to speak into the space that LEND um, should always be recorded as a leveraged product it, when you are for ACL reporting purposes, where you're, when your program is co-located. Um, I can't speak to any performance reporting for LEND programs, obviously but the LEND program when you are reporting on the USED side and for ACL reporting purposes should be documented and recorded as um, leveraged funding or a, le a leveraged project. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you, Danielle. Any other questions? I know that not all of you are part of LEND programs, but because this is um, a lot of LEND programs that are co-located with them, you said we wanted to make sure that we took some time today to, to address this and um, if there's any questions. Okay, well, I will turn it over to Brandon if there's no further questions. Okay, it's a great conversation. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, and everyone um, who asked uh, questions. Okay, so I do see another question from Stuart um, about what is um, a leveraged funding. Um, so that is a very good question and that's a very you said uh, answer as well. Um, Danielle, do you, I see you unmuted. Do you wanna take that one? Yeah, Brandon, I can answer that in the chat. It is going a little bit too far down the rabbit hole um, okay. for you suds. And so I don't want to take up too much more um, airtime on that. But Stuart, I will um, share an answer in chat so that, you know, for the benefit of everyone so that you can all see the, the response. Okay. Thank you so much, Danielle. Okay. 
So I know we have already um, talked about a ton of information, actually. Um, and so I think that um, before we go into NEARS, um, it might be a good time to take a five minute break. Um, and so we'll um, join back at around uh, 2.37 or so.
Okay, welcome back everyone from break. So um, our next topic, um, we're gonna get, now that we've kind of gotten the, um, uh, the definitions out of the way, um, then we're gonna jump into um, the nearest portion of today um, and talk through management of trainees and NEARS. Um, and so I think um, actually um, Oksana Klamova is set to start us off with today um, for um, talking about um, how the structure and is set up in NEARS um, and entering trainees um, into uh, the application. Um, but first, I, I just wanted to kind of um, introduce everyone that, um, like we talked about last time in NEARS, um, each of these buckets of information is set up um, into different what we call data sets. Um, and so just as, I and mean, we'll show that in just a minute, that trainees um, have their own dedicated um, place in NEARS um, called the trainee data set. Um, and this is set up to capture all of the individuals, um, uh, fellows or, or, or trainees at, at their training program. Um, and so just with that um, set up, then I will go ahead and uh, hand it off to Oksana. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Um, <clears throat> for this uh, portion of uh, our session, I created chart um, before we actually will start looking at NEARS. And I hope this chart will help all understand the structure of this data set. And first on this chart, I will start kind of in the middle with this oval pieces, uh, which represent different types of trainee. We talk about trainee you set and length, and we, you heard definition of these two groups, but down the line, you can actually identify three different type of uh, trainees. Uh, it, it can be you set or lens. It's long-term trainee, intermediate. This is definition for you set or medium trainee. This is term from uh, MCHB and short-term trainee. So what's included in records for long-term trainee and intermediate or medium uh, term trainees? You will have main record and this main record will have information about trainee that uh, changes very little from year to year. It's, for example, demographics or permanent address, uh, first name, last name. To that main record, you will be touching annual record. Each annual record associated with one year in uh, your training program. And one year, we're talking about one reporting year, what Brandon covered today at the beginning of our session. It's physical or program year. Uh, if your trainees stay several years in your program, you will have several annual records. So in this chart, you will see the long-term and intermediate uh, term trainees have main records and it, you can attach as many as you like annual records. Uh, number of those records will reflect uh, how many years trainees stay in the program. Also, you will be serving those trainees and you can do, uh, you will be having two type uh, surveys. You will be surveying those trainee two, five, or 10 years post-training period. So when your trainee graduated, um, you will send survey uh, requests to those trainee after two years, five, or 10 years. There is a second type of survey that you can actually um, ask trainee to complete. And that one can be sent every year. It's annual trainee contact update. 
Um, it's just request to update their personal information or email address just to stay in touch with your trainees. There is another group of trainees, short-term trainees. And for that group, uh, there is, we're collecting much less information than for long and medium trainees. Uh, we're collecting trainee record that somewhat match trainee main record for the long and intermediate term trainee. So that record will have some uh, personal information, so, such as first name, last name, demographics, and uh, some other type of data. And you can ask those trainee, um, share contact updates um, through survey, annual survey, survey. So that's the structure, data structure for this data set, for trainee data set. Um, Renan, you can take it from here and actually show how this structure uh, will be presented in application. Okay, thank you so much, Oksana. Um, so if we could go on to the next slide, please. Um, so I'll share my screen in NEARS and then we'll um, kind of walk through that together. Um, but uh, just some uh, quick um, benefits of the trainees data set in NEARS. Um, there are uh, tools available to determine um, those who um, submitted surveys and those that you still need um, to send the survey to. The, the pre-created surveys are already in the format um, that is requested by MCHB. Um, so you don't necessarily have to worry about, I mean, are these the right questions? Are these the right options? It's already in that format for you um, for what MCHB is requesting for your federal reporting. Um, there are standard reports in which provide quantitative and qualitative data on trainees and the surveys that they complete. Um, and of course, um, there's us and we have TA um, support that is offered throughout the year. If you ever get stuck, um, you can always contact us at nears at AUCD.org. And so without further ado, um, I'm going to um, first um, share my screen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about this slide really quick first and then I'll show you where to access this information. Um, so just with um, each of the data sets that we went through, um, just a brief overview, uh, the data sets are, are set up to where you can manage that data that is entered and to manage and enter new pieces of data. And then there is also to view and search the information that's already in NEARS. And that can be done through advanced searches and custom reports. We also have a really helpful and really awesome um, resource for you called um, Survey Instructions in the User's Guide. Um, and I'll show you um, where to find that here briefly. Um, and that's how you can um, send trainees their um, survey link, um, which is um, a really useful um, and, and really helpful tool. And then lastly, there's a data dictionary, which is a collection of names, definitions, attributes, um, but all of the different data elements um, that have been created um, and exist in years. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, before uh, the boot camp um, on day one, each everyone was sent um, logins to get into the test environment. I'm just going to walk through again how to um, log in to NEARS um, and how to get to it. It's from the AUCD homepage. Um, if you're logging in normally, again, if you're doing the homework, we recommend uh, to uh, use the test web application that we um, uh, talked about in the first session. And again, homework is completely optional. Um, it, it is your opportunity to get feedback from us um, and uh, to give feedback to us as well. And so there's this window right here on the homepage that says NEARS, and then you can just click login and then input your um, 
Well, first, uh, you want to make sure that you're in the correct uh, program or center um, for lens and USEDs. Um, you default uh, to that. However, PPCs, LIA, and DBPs, you want to make sure that you click the correct login here button. Click on this drop down, and you'll find your program in the drop down. And then just log in normally with your username and password. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, I'm in the using my AUCD Uber account, so some of the options that you'll see on screen are maybe slightly different from your login, um, but all, all of the options will be the same. Um, I'm going to use the test center for today, so none of the data that I'm showing on screen will be um, real data. And so just that, like we talked about, um, the trainees data set, this is where the bucket of information goes into for all of your trainees um, and trainee fellows. Um, and so, and like we talked about, um, it's set up where you can manage those trainees, you can add new trainees um, and see existing information that's in there. And then you can view and search um, for existing um, trainees that are already entered in 10 years. Um, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, go over here and just show you really quickly. Um, I'm going to go to manage long term uh, trainees just so I can show you um, at the very top of the screen. Um, it's, it'll show you what page you're on. Um, and then on the right side of the screen, there will be that option for the advanced search um, that you can. Um, a search for existing information. There's survey instructions that I just talked about. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that link really quickly. And that'll take you to the user's guide. Um, and that's where you can find survey information. If you scroll down a little bit down the page, those survey links are linked here. Um, for MCHB training programs, we're only interested in LEND and LEND you said. So we just want to make sure that whenever we're sending those links that we um, use the correct link here. Um, but I definitely uh, suggest reading through this. This gives really good information on surveying trainees. Um, and it, it's available um, year long, like we said. Um, if you're a PPC, LIA, DBP, um, you said or LEND, uh, there is a navigation um, that you can use to click in um, and I uh, just want to make sure you're on the right survey page. Um, and you can kind of click around and um, explore this a little bit through the boot camp. Going back into NEARS now, um, we're going to skip the SA tool. That's an outdated link. Right next to that is the data dictionary that we talked about. Um, this again will pull up um, the data dictionary, which is just a collection of all the different definitions um, and um, is a really useful and really cool tip that we have built into NEARS. Um, you can just click right into that um, if you have any questions on some of the fields and what they mean. Okay, so um, I did want to pause here. Do we have any questions on um, how the trainee data set is structured? And since I'm sharing my screen, if my colleagues will please um, let me know if we have anything in chat. Brandon, we don't have anything in the chat yet. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, well then um, we'll go ahead and trudge onward then. <laughs> um, so, um, Whenever you are entering trainees into NEARS, like Oksana said, um, you'll first want to, the very first step that you want to think about, um, and again, you might want to reach out to your MCHB project officer and consult with the NOFO on what those requirements are, um, on, uh, but you want to determine if first that trainee will um, count as a LIA um, or a, a PPC or a DBP or a LEND trainee, um, and then you'll want to determine is that trainee a long-term are they a medium-term or are they a short-term trainee at your training program? 
Um, for training purposes, um, just for um, uh, today's example, we're going to pretend that we're going uh, to walk through the journey of entering a long-term trainee who has completed more than 300 plus um, contact hours on didactic and experiential learning. And so after we've decided um, what type of trainee that we are, that they are, we're then going to um, jump into adding a new trainee into the trainee's data set in years. And that's done again in the trainee data set. And it's this very first link right here, um, add long medium term trainee. We're gonna go ahead and click on that really quickly. Oh, Brandon, can I interrupt you for a second? Uh, yeah, there's of stuff course. in the chat. There's stuff in the chat. Okay. A couple of questions in the chat. Uh, I can, can read you them too. Yeah, Brandon. please, please. Um, Jason asks, uh, can you open the data, the, di the dictionary window to have it open while you're working through a data input page? Or does one need to toggle back and forth between a working page and the dictionary? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, so the answer is yes, you can have this open at the same time here. Let me go ahead and split my screen really quickly. Um, you can see that I have it open in the corner of my screen, data dictionary, trainees. I know I'm in the right data set. Um, and then I can just kind of go on through with a form um, side by side. You got a thumbs up emoji. Fantastic. We love thumbs ups. And that's all. OK. Thank you, Rachel. OK, excellent question. Um, OK, so um, you'll see here um, that uh, there's um, going to be quite a few questions that we'll go through. Um, and so I'll try to point out questions that I um, commonly receive questions about. Um, and then um, you want to note, too, um, just like with all data sets, uh, the questions that are required will have an asterisk next to them. Um, I do want to check in. Is the is my screen large enough before I continue on? Do I need to zoom in any further? It looks good to me, Brandon. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I'll just kind of um, scroll through here as we go. Um, I, I will also note um, some of the fields um, that are going to be um, exported um, during the um, Digis export import process. Um, that we talked about on the first day. And remember, um, that's pieces of information um, that will be provided to MCHB um, whenever um, it, that uh, final reporting comes around. Um, and so um, the very first two fields are actually fields that um, are required for MCHB reporting. And that is your trainee's first name and last name. Um, and so, I um, mean, and, and actually, I, I do kind of want to backtrack a little bit before I get any further into this, um, because like with Anna, with uh, what Oksana said, there is um, that main record um, that is information that is least likely to change. That'll be like their address, their contact information, first name, last name, and that's the first form that we're in right now. Um, and that's the one that um, will be their main record. You will only ever enter this once. Um, and then their annual year record, um, and that will be for every year that they're a training program. Um, and we'll get to that after we get done with this first um, form right here. And we'll see, and you'll see how that is built into NEARS. Okay, so, um, and then the second field that we'll come across is this academic degree. Um, this is the degree that they are um, working towards um, as they're a training program, and you can click it down on the Dropbox. Um, I'm going to um, just put in uh, my information in here, um, just to kind of give an example. And for me, I know that I was in, um, working on my MPH. Um, and so I'm going to put that in there. And then uh, my address. Um, this is also information that is required for MCHB reporting, and so I'm going to make sure that I fill that out. Um, make sure you put their um, current address, um, city, state, um, zip code, and so on and so forth. 
Um, you'll notice that these email fields are not required, um, but um, best practices, you wanna make sure that you have current, current email addresses. The more contact information that you have for your trainees, the better. Um, because if you remember, you'll have to go back and try to survey trainees um, at the um, every two, five, and 10 years. And so you wanna make sure that you can get a hold of them when the time comes. Brendan, we have a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, isn't achieved what they achieved in the past, not what they're currently working on? Current is captured in the annual record. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I, I apologize. I, I misspoke. Thank you. Yes, I achieved academic um, degree. So you'll actually for because I was where I was a master's student whenever I completed my LIND training, I had completed my um, BS. Um, I, I had completed my bachelor's in science. So yes, you're correct. And I believe that answers both of the um, questions that were in the chat. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, so continuing on down the form. Um, yeah, as you come down the phone, um, come down the form again. There's some more contact information you can put in their phone number, um, which is also really good um, for contacting them later. Um, you can put a permanent contact address, um, a secondary address for like a family member or someone like that. Um, gender, as uh, per reporting requirements, male or female. Um, and you'll note from uh, Caitlin Bagley, what she reported it on, um, those, that'll be a different list in their annual record, and those will be changing up here in the um, BB whenever you come in um, to this, this upcoming year for your reporting. And so you'll notice some changes whenever you go into the annual record for that. Race and ethnicity are also fields that are required for um, MCHB reporting. So you wanna make sure that you put in information on that. Um, and then Ed, I will also ask you um, position setting um, at their um, training program. Um, and so this is another question that I receive very um, commonly. Um, you want to supply the trainee's primary position title upon admission to your training program. Um, for example, if they're an elementary school teacher, um, um, upon entering um, your uh, program, then you want to put elementary school uh, uh, teacher as their um, a title and then their position, uh, maybe that'll be um, like at a, at a school or an elementary school or something like that. Uh, Brandon, there is currently a conversation going on in the chat about uh, whether you should use your the university email or a primary non-university email for the trainees uh, to contact them. Um, most people in the chat are um, saying that they use non-university emails because those uh, sometimes uh, expire after the person is out of uh, the program. Yes, that is a very good point, too. Um, if you remember a lot of uh, school emails, uh, they'll get deactivated um, sometime after they graduate from their training program, their university email will no longer be active, um, which is why I say the more types of email, the more contact information you can um, get from them while they're a trainee already at your training program, the better. That's a very good point. Uh, one more uh, point from the chat. Uh, what if the trainee is not employed at the time of admission? Um, then um, you could put student in that uh, field um, if that's most appropriate. Um, just to give an example, if they're um, a, a student um, and they're not employed, um, then that could be an option that you could put there. Great, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then at the, we're almost done with their annual record. Um, then the last two questions ask you about their personal relationship with disabilities. Um, and so you just wanna note um, based on the options um, that are provided um, on uh, what their relationship is. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, note that um, because I have a family member um, who is a person with a disability. 
Um, and then um, these last two fields um, you can kind of um, ignore because these are from that annual contact update that Oksana was talking about, that mini survey, and we'll go over that a little bit later today. After we finished going through here, um, I'm going to go ahead and save the record. Um, and this is a very good example. Um, it looks like NEARS, this is a richly really cool um, <laughs> um, feature in NEARS. If there's someone already entered into NEARS with the same name, NEARS is going to prompt you and be like, hey, wait a minute, there's already a main record with that trainee. Do you want to just attach a new annual record to that trainee? Um, because again, you only want one main record per person. Um, you don't want to duplicate their main record, but you can uh, have multiple annual records um, for, for that trainee. And so since there's already someone already existing, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, go ahead and just um, tack that on to um, the existing main record. And that'll take you into their um, existing record. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, just click edit and make sure that all of that information is um, already here and updated and then um, save the screen. Brandon, we did receive one question while you're still on the main record. This is Jackie. Yes. Um, so sometimes when you gave the example of that they're a student, that sometimes they may not be a student, maybe community member. So I put in the chat, yes, you can put community member. Mm -hmm. um, and that in that case, um, for the setting, can they write NA yes. in position setting if it's not applicable? Um, if it's Jackie, not applicable. No, we're ahead, yes. Oksana. Sorry. Yes, uh, uh, that field is a text field, and whatever appropriate to, for that student, uh, you can write your explanation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oksana. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent questions. Okay. So um, after you have. Um, finished um, adding in the remain record, you can uh, click at the save at the top of the screen um, normally. Um, and then if there is a record in there, the NEARS will ask you. Um, and then you'll, you'll see, you, you saw at that page um, whenever did, there was an option to add a new um, annual record or to edit their existing main record. Um, and so you can um, toggle back and forth pretty easily um, between those two. Um, and so it immediately takes you into their annual record um, after um, you've saved their main record, um, which is a really uh, cool functionality in NEARS 2. Um, for every trainee, you want to make sure that they have an existing um, annual record with their main record. You want to make sure that they have um, at least one of those two records associated um, with their with their trainee. And so you'll notice um, here, um, I, I'm, I'm now in their trainee um, fiscal year, I'm now in their annual record. Um, and then it'll say the trainee's name up here in the top, um, just so I can orientate myself with where I am in the program. And so now we're gonna go through and the fiscal year, I'm gonna note a lot of the same things. Um, you'll notice I'm um, here fiscal year. This is the, again, between uh, July 1st and June 30th of the following year. Um, and this is indicating the year in which it ends. We are in fiscal year 2023. So I'm just gonna add an um, a, a annual record for the current year. Brandon, there's a few comments in the chat that I'd like to go through with you. Okay. Okay, so um, there are questions about um, confusion about academic level. Um, Robin mentioned that the majority of students should be graduate level. Um, mm -hmm. She also mentioned, uh, she, asked, she also asked, what is the NEARS definition of academic level? If you have that. Okay. So that is a very good question. Um, so academic level, um, we have uh, that listed as their, uh, and their main record um, 
as their as they they achieved um, what what they have completed um, and and their main record. Um, and their annual record again that is um, entered every year that they're a, a trainee a, a your training program um, that is the um, the training to what, what level that they are um, as they're going through your your train the, the the their enrollment at a uh, university okay. is that correct Oksana I want to check in with um, some of my other colleagues too just to make sure I got that correct uh, actually uh, I want to kind of give the tool everyone um, to, to learn how to find those definitions um, so right at the beginning um, Brandon introduced you with link to dictionary on every page near of in each data set or working with trainees data set. You will find link dictionary. If you open that link, it will take you directly to the, um, the new window will pop up. So you will be staying on the same page uh, where you're working with your trainee. New window will pop up and it will open all definitions that used in trainee data set. You can search that dictionary page and uh, we'll find academic level there. Mm -hmm. Academic level have definition is required field, select the trainee's current enrollment status, not the highest degree earned from the pull down menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Example, on the screen right now. Yeah. If the MD, has enrolled in your MPH program, select master's because she, he is currently enrolled in the master program. And uh, uh, we have pulled down list of all available options. Yeah, so thank you, Oksana. I, I, I hope it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it will answer the question. Brandon, there is another question in the chat about when we ask this information of the individual, should we also ask them for pronouns? What are the most common forms in syntax for indicating pronoun set choices? Do you indicate her twice as in she, her, her, for example? And I know there's changes coming with gender fields. So I'm, I'm not sure if Oksana or Brandon want to touch on that quickly. I doubt that it will be collected in in years, this is just just um, you said practice. I want very quickly touch on that, uh, Stuart. We're not collecting pronouns right now, but there are changes in the main record. You saw there is a gender field, and uh, MCHB requested immediate changes. And right now, when you're going to do your homework on development or test server you will see the gender actually pull down box and I can quickly share my screen ah, to show those changes. Yeah, thank you, Oksana. Um, if I can find myself. I understand that. I understand all of what you're, what you're, what you're saying, but, but it's not right. what I'm asking. Um, Let I, me just I, finish. The, Stuart, let me just quickly show the changes that you will, you will see. On, on development server. So this is the new options for gender that uh, you will um, see on development servers and come to the trainee profile. Um, Stuart, I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question. Can you clarify? Like uh, I was, um, uh, uh, I always ask that question because um, I myself am unfamiliar with the different sets. Uh, we we have nobody who uses them right now, but I'm 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 just unfamiliar with different with the different sets of pronouns and how many of them have different different um, he him his. How many of them have three forms and how many of them have only two? Yes, you understand. NIRS right now do not collect that type of information. We 
Yes, but then you can there, jump back to. Yeah, yeah. there are um, up, okay. up, upcoming changes. Um, and, and so you'll see that um, as um, in, in future years, um, as um, those options will um, will uh, um, will 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 happen. Right, and just to be sure that that everybody on the same page, the change is coming to the gender field. Uh, we're not collecting um, pronouns uh, information on trainees. Mm -hmm. Would would there be a better be, a better time when when people are um so um to to ask them be, would would it be a better time to ask people because I'm not specifically asking you um um would it would there be a better um a better time just to ask people and gather data on what various you said do. I think maybe I I'm think a little it's, bit it's really it's it's a really good question for um for the data coordinator meeting upcoming quarterly meeting I think we can uh add it to our agenda and uh, um talk about options um uh, and uh, maybe a uh, future introduction of new fields but I think it should be discussed between data coordinators Brandon, we have a few more questions in the chat. And then I think yes. for those that are in the boot camp, I do want to make sure we get to all the content in today's mm -hmm. boot camp. I know that Oksana and Brandon have planned a lot. So if we don't answer your question immediately in the chat, it's just because we're going to group them and wait for a pausing period. And then <laughs> I make sure that they won't be lost, I promise. Um, but before we move forward, there's uh, two questions. What if they are a LEN trainee that had been both a short-term and a long-term trainee. You can't combine those into one record. And Julie, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they've previously been a short-term trainee and they're becoming a long-term trainee, or I don't know if you wanna clarify that. Yes, we've had um, trainees who perhaps have dipped their toe into working at our center and had a short-term experience in LEND um, say in our clinics. And then um, we perhaps a year or two later have them as long term trainees. They end up being two records because you can't combine short term and long term um, trainees into one record. Um, the, the, short, the short answer will be you can have both records, short and long term trainee, for one trainee because to MCHB, you're reporting only long-term trainees. Um, as a practice, uh, I, I'm not sure um, if you will be able to keep track um, the same trainee kind of at the same time, but all reports that you will be using, you, you will be able to separate short and long-term trainees. So they will be reported in different categories. Okay, uh, it was my understanding that the USAID doesn't collect the short term trainee information, correct? And then it's only MCHB that actually does collect the short term as well as um, intermediate and long term information, correct? MCHB? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. And I just. Um... I'm going through, so be patient with me. There's a lot of comments. Um, I know Katie Thompson had noted that um, that she they are always worried about the people who are filling out our surveys. They don't have a dictionary. Do they really understand how to answer these questions? Which I'm not sure if another data coordinator has some best practices of how they are communicating um, to when they're sending surveys out if they have best practices of how they're giving what what is academic level or any other additional information um if so i would add that to the chat i'm not sure if brendan or Oksana have any comments before i move on to the next question 
JK, I'm sorry. I lost track where we are. I'm trying to follow the meeting chat and scroll. No worries. Um, there was a question about people or trainees probably filling out their surveys. They don't have a dictionary. Do they really understand how to answer these questions? Uh, we will provide some instructions in survey, so they don't need dictionary. So they have pretty explicitly stated questions. So hopefully they, they can understand. Uh, we try to use plain language as much as possible. So I hope uh, they don't need a dictionary to answer those questions. Um, and uh, this is actually going to be a piece that we'll talk about a little bit later as well. Um, but there is a way for you to email um, those trainees to survey directly in years and to tag yourself as a resource person. Um, in case if there are any questions, um, then you can help them answer those questions. Um, if you have questions on how um, to interpret that, then um, um, we're more than happy to help as well. Great, and I see some folks have added um, perhaps challenges that they had. Most of our trainees enter position and program as LEND trainee or um, providing you know, some suggestions for providing contacts and others. I do want to get to just Esther's question, which they were asking, what if they are professionals in the field and not currently enrolled in a master's or doctoral program? Um, and I believe Robin responded. I'm trying to follow the thread because it was from earlier. Um, but um, Brandon, um, it's just the example shown on your screen should show academic level of graduate if they're in an MPH program. Again, current level, mm -hmm. not achieved level. Um, and then Robin had answered an earlier question. I just want to know reporting is annual, so it shouldn't matter what happened in past years for a trainee and that they do collect short, medium, and long-term trainees. But I don't know if um, for Esther, if they're professionals in the community not currently enrolled in a master's or doctoral program. Okay, sorry, I think my um, internet might have cut off a little bit. So I don't know if I caught the last part of that. Um, I'm going to turn off my video because I think my internet is a little bit unstable. Um, so I will kind of continue sharing my screen. Um, Jackie, I will try to answer this. There is option other. And uh, if it's not not master or doctor, probably uh, there is option other. And if you select it, you will need provide actually definition that, yes, that field at academic level, please specify, got active. And you will need to type explanation what it is. Thank you, Oksana. Okay. okay. So are we um, caught up with the uh, uh, questions? I think so. Ivana just asked, will they be non-degrees? But I believe Oksana mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And there is actually op option non-degree seeking. It's standalone option. You don't mm -hmm. need to use other. Yep. So Jackie, just to resume, we can use both then other or non-degree seeking? If it's non-degree seeking, better just select non-degree seeking. It's one of the option in pull down okay. list. If okay. it's something else and you could not uh, select uh, any option, uh, in the list, select other and provide uh, definition in the line which says other academic level, please specify. You will not be able to submit the form if you not specify what other you mean. Yeah, so for example, like a certificate um, that they are pursuing um, that, that might not, um, that, that, that may um, be other, for example. Okay, thank you. That's what I thought for certificates. Thank you. Great. So I don't believe we've missed any questions. Again, um, we will take some designated time for questions just to allow Brandon to go through the demonstration. Um, so please continue to add them to the chat. And then when we pause, I'll make sure to collect all of those and have Brandon and Oksana answer. 
Thank you all. Thank you so much, Jackie. Okay, so um, great, amazing questions, everyone. We love um, this this part. Um, it's it, it's great to talk together. And um, okay, so um, for uh, going into their annual um, form now. Um, Again, the very first field, um, this is going to be an MC, um, a field that would be reported on to MCHB. This is uh, the field that notes when they were uh, a, a trainee at your um, training program. And so you want to make sure um, that this is listed correctly. Academic level, um, again, is also another one um, that will be um, provided to MCHB. And so you want to make sure that that, that is um, filled that correctly, just like um, how we talked about um, and, and the differences between each of the options um, in the context of the questions. Um, and discipline um, is another one, um, and that is um, what discipline they are um, in, in their um, degree program and for your, your training program. Um, there are a lot of options here, so you just want to make sure you look through here carefully. Um, for example, for me, um, I was public health epidemiology, so I'm going to make sure I'm going to pick epidemiology as the option. Current contact hours, um, this is the um, number of hours that they're involved in experiential training and didactics um, for the um, current reporting period only. Um, we're interested in those two, um, the between that period of um, July 1st to June 30th of the following year. So you just want to make sure that you're including um, in how they're um, being reported on for their contact hours. For me, I know for a fact I was a um, full-time trainee, so I'm going to note that on the form. Enrollment status is one that I receive a lot of questions about too. Um, and that's actually um, their enrollment status and their degree program. For me, I was a part time um, in my uh, degree program. I was only taking two classes. Um, and again, that is, um, uh, um, and that is um, how uh, my uh, university defined it part time. Um, so um, we're going to continue on. Um, uh, down into, um, you want to make sure that you note um, the year that they started your training program and the year that they um, completed the training program. Um, and this pertains to the training program only, not the academic year, not the fiscal year. Um, you want to know when they started and when they finished from your training program. And so that's a little bit of a shift. Um, and we have these um, notes on the page that'll pop up to, re to remind you of that as well. Um, and so that's another really cool feature um, that you can um, see on the screen as we're walking through this form. And then this is um, what uh, Julie Shears was talking about, that this is the part on the form where you can know, were they a LEN trainee? Um, for uh, PPCs, LIAs, and DBPs, you'll see, you know, were they a DBP trainee or were they a LIA trainee? And then um, you can mark yes. For LENS and USEDS, that co to the combination of program, you'll see an extra question here. Were they a USED pre-service prep trainee? And then that's where you can mark that um, on, on the form. For me, I was not a USED trainee. I was only a LIN trainee, so I'm going to mark that on the form as well. This next field is um, whether or not um, your LIN trainee um, received MCH um, support. I mean, so this is a, like for their stipend, for example. Um, and I'm just going to demo this real quick. This is another really cool feature in NEARS. If I click no, are they a LIN trainee? That automatically changes it to no, because if they're not a LIN trainee, how can they receive um, support from MCHB? And then if I clicked yes again, that is no longer um, blacked out, um, then I can go ahead and change my response to that. This next field is among completion from your training program. 
taking into effect all of their training experiences throughout the year? Are they going to be considered a long-term training or are they going to be considered an intermediate or medium-term trainee? Um, and again, uh, that is um, based on the um, number of hours and their experiential training and their didactics and all those other requirements that are outlined in their NOFO um, and that um, you may have to discuss with your project officer. Um, and um, I just, just want to note on here, as this is new guidance from MCHB, um, that individuals whose entire training program is less than 40 hours are captured as short-term trainees and that undergraduate long-term trainees are generally not allowed. Um, you want to please contact your project officer before, in under, um, before enrolling undergraduate long-term trainees into your program. Um, and just a quick um, note, um, also, do you can refer to your NOFO for exceptions as well. And then, uh, then we go on to if your trainee received MCH uh, support, then you can enter the amount um, that they received through the different types, like if they received a stipend, if they trained, uh, if they received tuition, so on and so forth. Um, and then you can note um, the core um, grant funding that they received, if that's from MCH support or um, so on and so forth. This next field is um, their uh, training uh, projects that they work on throughout the year, the products rather, and you can enter those in their record as well. For now, um, if we're entering these um, at the start of the training, at the program, um, at the training year, I'm sorry, then we're not going to put this in right away. We're going to leave those blank for right now. Um, and then um, there's a couple of optional questions. This is another really good example of one of those user-defined fields, again, that we uh, talked about in the first day, um, and those are always at the very bottom of the form. I'm going to leave that blank for now and then save the page. Okay. And then I'm just going to pause right here again for questions. So you have a few notes. So I think sometimes the fiscal year may be confusing here. Um, and I, I think some folks agree. So especially if they span two fiscal years. Um, and so there's a recommendation for AUCD to consider changing that to period of performance or reporting year. Um, and I just mentioned, and again, with most of the suggestions here too, if you if you have uh, feedback or recommendations, um, we can definitely bring it to the next coordinators meeting and um, discuss with um, all the coordinators that perhaps are not able to join today's meeting um, and add it to our potential wish list. Um, and then there's also a note which Oksana may be able to explain <laughs> um, the, the, the reason why forms are built the way they are, but um, one person mentioned, well, I appreciate the notes, this form would be less confusing if current academic program was not mixed in with the training program info. Oksana, do you have any comments or thoughts about, I know that um, there's a reason why some of the forms are built the way that they are. And so um, let me know if you have any comment to that. If yes, not, the actual okay. forms build based on um, Discretionary grant performance measure. The uh, there is a required data that uh, each center will provide for uh, to MCHB on a, on an annual basis. So the forms actually collecting information that required by MCHB and uh, MCHB have certain forms in those performance measure documents. So we will we try to kind of closely replicate those forms in NIRS. And uh, um, NIRS exists, the first iteration of NIRS was started in 2002. So it's very iterative process. So um, between then and now, we definitely 
went through certain rounds of revision, but that's the best way so far uh, we collect information. We found the way to collect information required uh, for, for your reports. Yeah. Definitely open for suggestion for improvement. Uh, it's, it's our goal to, to build something that is intuitive and easy to, to collect data on specific point and in this point on trainees. Great. And there's just a, a updated comment that just rearranging the fields within the form could really clarify. So I think it's a great suggestion. And that's why we do have data coordinators quarterly meeting. We encourage you to participate on those because all ideas about NIRS improvement comes from those meetings. We there is a um, we do have a list of all um, recommendations. We call it wish list NIRS. So and as much as we able every year, we we try and implement your suggestions. Yes, so please continue with suggestions um, and we will always uh, take feedback from the data coordinators. Um, there is a question, did Brandon say, and this is about enrollment status, did Brandon say enrollment status refers to the, to the degree program, not the Lend and USO program? What if they are not a student? There's only a full-time and part-time choice. And then I, I did see that Robin had noted that sometimes family members or individuals with disabilities may be allowable long-term trainees as undergrads. Brandon, can you speak a little bit more to the enrollment status? Or just to clarify? Yeah, yeah, um, of course. So um, I, again, um, what I, um, for, for enrollment status here, let me go back into, um, the field again um, is this what we're we're talking about right the enrollment status um, this is based on their um, current um, school status um, and so um this is and i can just know here um i know that in the ddis performance report um when it refers to again all these fields link back to what's required in your federal reporting from mchb so um we didn't make up the term enrollment status for instance um enrollment staff is one of the required fields and i i if someone from MCHB just want to make sure that I'm saying this correctly, we did go back to DGIS to confirm, and it is in terms of how they define it, and I don't have the exact definition within the forms, it is based off their current school status, um, not based off whether they're like a full-time or something trainee at a USET or LEND program. And it looks like Robin's checking on it, <laughs> so they'll get back to us shortly. So maybe we can have an answer on that. Yeah. I so. mean, in DG, just jumping in very quickly, in DGIS, it's spelled out as a student status for current year. So. Yeah. So I hope that that answers the question there too. Um, and it sounds like um, Robin um, will will find a definitive answer for us too. Um, and there is a question. Oh, it looks like Caitlin is looking up the definition. So um, hold on, because we may get some clarification, because there's also a question about if they're not a student, would they choose full time or part time? Um, so why don't we wait for the definition? <laughs> um, but in, so while we're waiting, there is a question that says we have a unique situation of a long term trainee as a USET trainee and meets requirements to be a medium term trainee for LEND. I think we entered them as duplicate. Is that OK or do you have other suggestions? So this is a great question and actually one that has come up on a previous data coordinators um, call um, and personally what uh, Julie Shears was talking about earlier in this meeting as well. Um, and so, uh, like Oksana said, you can differentiate um, in a in in the form, um, you know, if they're a, a lender or a USAID trainee and then 
um, be between the two of them, this is the question right here upon completing for me, they will qualify as a based upon the culmination of, of those hours that they put in at, at, at the training program. And trainees are allowed um, one long term or medium term, and then they can also have a short term record as well that is allowable. Okay, and that, it, let us know if that did not make sense. Um, those are the end of the questions. I know we're still waiting on the definition for enrollment and full time part time, and that may help determine, you know, if they're not a student, so we can get back to that question. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon, I'll let you take it away unless we have a break coming up. Um, so I'll let you move forward. Okay, so thank you so much. You know what, actually, speaking of breaks, I think it will be a great time to take another five minute break, because uh, I know we've already gone through a lot of information. Um, and I just want to give everyone, um, you know, a time to kind of stretch your legs a little bit. So we will um, return around um, 3, uh, 340 or so. Um, we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, 
So welcome back, everyone, from a brief break. Um, we will go ahead and um, start um, in the uh, in NEARS again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Brandon, I just wanted to um, let you know that Caitlin has their hand up, which um, we may be getting an answer to our question. Okay, I'll let you take uh, the take the floor, Caitlin. Thanks. Um, so I was looking in the OMB package, and it looks like because on our end, this is just a form that doesn't have a formal de detail sheet attached. Um, we don't have a formal definition for these at this time. In our next round of OMB updates, we're looking to convert these forms into more extensive detail sheets with definitions. Um, it looks like for now, a lot of grantees who have non-degree seeking students are just reporting them as part-time for enrollment status. Um, so you can check part-time for them. And then I will make a note to have more um, accurate options that take non-degree seeking students into account in the next OMB package. So appreciate that question and we will get that fixed for future iterations. So thank you so much, Caitlin. So um, we'll jump back into NEARS, uh, back where we left off. Um, and so we just finished making our first uh, trainee main record and trainee uh, annual record in NEARS. Um, and so I'm going to run through a couple of uh, commonly asked questions to help guide us through our process. Um, as we're um, going through this journey in the trainees data set. So the very first question that I typically get um, that I wanted to talk about um, is, um, and I think we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but um, should I create a main record and an annual record pair um, for subsequent years um, if the trainee will stay in the program for uh, more than one year? Um, and like we discussed earlier, the answer to that question is no. Um, we want to create a main record only once for that trainee. And then we want to attach annual records for every year that they're a trainee in our training program. Um, and so that um, would, would be a best practice in years. And so the question then becomes, you know, how do I do that? How do I access a training record that's already um, been added in 10 years if our trainee already has a main record. And so in years, um, this is again in the trainee data set, I can manage existing uh, training records and trainee manage long-term, medium-term trainees if they're a longer medium-term trainee um, and, and that are, was entered into years. And so for us, I'm just gonna simplify this um, just for us and then we'll go back through. Um, you'll uh, notice that um, this is the record that um, we uh, just created. Um, we entered um, Brandon Lewis as our example and you'll see um, that they have over here their main record. And you can see that that's noted. Um, I, we entered for fiscal year 2023, you'll see their academic level masters, um, their discipline, and then what type of trainee. You can see that we have one annual record attached to them. If we look on the example below them, this is what it looks like if they have multiple annual records. Um, you can see we have year 2022 and then 2023 right below them. That, that's what it looks like if there's more than one year. So you can kind of see both at the same time. And so again, um, just like with other data sets that we've already discussed, it's um, managed in the exact same way. Um, you can see here, um, and but just because um, in the trainees data set, we're dealing with two different kinds of records. We have their main record, which is on the left side of the screen, and then their year record that's on the right side of the screen. If I go to manage main record and I click on those three dots, that'll take us into view or edit. 
And then also at the same time, if I go over to their annual record, if I want to edit their annual year record um, for 2023, um, then I can access um, their annual information um, right here again, just by clicking on those three dots. And so there are three different ways that you can add subsequent trainee years. The first way is to go to their main record and then to um, select um, add the, um, the, the view button right here. And then you can see that'll take us to a view. And then uh, up here at the very top, there is an add trainee year record option that'll take us to the screen. Now you might look at this and you'll be like, wait a minute, this looks like the exact same form that we just filled out. And you'll be absolutely correct because another really cool feature is that for trainees who already have an existing trainee record, the information is pulled in so that you don't have to duplicate your entry. And then all you have to do is just, it, you'll just need to update those responses in years um, for that other annual record that you've already, they, that you want to enter into in years. Um, and so we have this happen quite often um, where maybe they'll come back multiple times um, during their academic program. And so maybe a lot of this information for their annual record will be the same. Um, maybe they'll still be a non-degree seeking, maybe they'll still, they'll still be a self-advocate. Um, and you can make all of those selections and based on, um, on how they were reported. Um, and you'll just wanna make sure to update those contact hours if the year that they started and completed the program are different um, and so on and so forth down the, uh, down the um, form. Um, and again, all of these are individual to their training program. And so if they have different MCH supports, you want to make sure that you update that on the form too, because that might be different every year that they are a trainee at your training program. And then after we've updated all of those fields, we're going to make sure that everything looks correct. We're going to double check and check it twice, maybe even check it a third time, just to make sure that we're thorough. And then we're going to save the screen once we're sure everything looks good. And then like we were talking about, there are three total ways um, that you can add a trainee record. And so we're going to go back to manage long-term, medium-term trainees. The second way is uh, to click on their most recent annual record. And then you'll now see an option on the right side of the screen, remember or their annual record is accessed on the right side on those three dots. And you'll see that there's an option to add a new annual record um, onto their, their, most recent, um, their most recent record again. And that'll take us right back into the form again. Just for repetition's sake, I'm not gonna go um, back through and add another one, but I just wanted to show you again um, that that can be accessed from there. And then the third way, I'm just gonna go right back to that same screen that we were just at, manage long-term, medium-term trainees and the trainee data set. And then I'm gonna go again onto their annual record. And instead of clicking add this time, I'm going to click view. And this time you'll see that there's another option, save as new. And that's our third way to add a new annual record. We can click on save as new and that'll save it as a new annual record. And again, make sure you update those responses on the form because all of those responses previously will automatically populate on here and you just need to update them. Okay, um, and so I just want to pause here in case if there are any questions. Brandon, I don't see anything in the chat as of right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then we're going to go on to the next question. So what happens if I accidentally um, 
I added their main record. And then I'm in the process of adding a new annual record. Excuse me. I've started um, putting in their information. And then I, um, for some reason, need to step away, maybe, um, uh, or maybe I accidentally uh, click out of uh, the browser because um, uh, my computer is going to force update. Um, and now I am um, out of the uh, login and then I, I need to log back in into NEARS. Um, what, what happens um, to that record um, if I've not completed it? Um, and I'll show you where to find that information really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and log in again and then go right back in to the test center. And so first I just wanna show you um, because the, the record didn't automatically save, right? We still have those two annual records that we've already just made, 2022, 2023, but we just started a 2021 record. What happened to it? And so there's actually a really cool standard report that we can run in NEARS. Um, and just as with the directory data set that we discussed last time, trainees also have standard reports that are pre-populated um, reports um, that are just standardized the same information um, that is populated already. Records that are they're not completed, if I have an annual record that's not finished, we can go into this trainee data entry errors um, and then run that report. Um, and you'll see um, that it will come up for us as soon as it loads for me. So I'm gonna find myself in here. Sorry, give me a second here. Oh, okay, I think I see what, what might have happened. Okay, <laughs> so give me a second here. Let me re redo that example and then. Um, okay, maybe not, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll uh, adjust a little bit and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, um, what what I mean here. Okay, so um, to just another example, um, sorry for any, if any confusion, but um, so I'm just gonna use Priscilla Acosta here as an example, um, just for time saving. Um, and so you'll see here that um, she, she's missing um, a missing year record. It says right here um, at the top of the screen um, that um, the, the missing or the error that pops up, and then this is what I am trying to get at. Um, annual records that um, are, are not complete, um, they'll come up um, as missing their annual record, and it'll say that it's missing all of these different fields. And so for Priscilla, um, it's very easy to access um, their record. Again, you can just click on that name and then it'll bring you here to her record. Um, and then you can just click add trainee year record um, to match that record with, um, with her um, annual record. And then you can input all of her information on here. I mean, so I hope that was uh, clear as mud. Um, do, do we have any questions on that one? Uh, there are no questions in the chat. Okay. Okay, so those are the two most common questions that I get in the trainees data set uh, for long-term, medium-term trainees. Um, how to access um, and add new um, annual records and then how to access um, annual records that are completed um, whenever you first put in their annual record. Okay. Um, and so now that we've um, covered um, long-term and medium-term trainees, um, I want to review that third bucket of trainees, the short-term trainee form. Um, I want to remind everyone that, the, that um, short-term trainees are those that have completed 40 or less hours of didactic and experiential training 
um, based on those um, that's outlined in the NOFO. Um, and based on the entrainee data structure, um, you remember um, that we'll need to complete only one form. Um, and so there's actually um, less pieces of information um, that we'll need to know for these trainees. And so to add a new trainee that's short term, they're under a different um, bucket. Um, and so you can see there's an option in the trainees to add short term trainee, and that's where we would put these trains. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on that um, just to show um, where that is um, in the database. Um, and I'm sorry, I think my uh, screen just froze. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this is an example um, of what the form will look like. Um, and so you'll see that there's very few um, questions that are required on this form. As we scroll down, the only question that's required technically is the, is this a trainee? And then to identify the person or relationship with disabilities. Um, however, um, best practices will still be to enter as much information as you can um, for the um, trainee that you're entering, um, just so um, you have as much complete information on their record. Um, and so I'm not actually going to enter any information because I want to roll into um, the next um, question, but I just want to um, just quickly point out, um, again, you can note their first name, last name, the fiscal year, again, that they're short-term trainee at your training program, discipline, if you note, a lot of these questions are the same from their annual record and from their main record. Um, and so then we can just go and add as much information that we can. For trainees that already have um, short-term records, um, they're underneath, again, manage short-term trainees. They're in a different bucket and the uh, manage record. And you can see um, that we have one record already entered in here. Um, we didn't know their name, so we didn't uh, put anything here. Um, other than just the one uh, piece of information. Um, but then the next question um, that maybe I receive a lot of questions about is, can I roll a short-term trainee? Maybe they decided that they were gonna enroll as a long-term or medium-term trainee in our training program a little bit later. How, can, is it possible to just create their record and roll that into a long-term training record at a later time. I mean, so the answer to that question is absolutely. We can change their short-term training record into a long-term training record at any time. And you can um, do that after they have been created. Uh, by going to their manage um, trainee record. And then I can click on edit their short-term trainee record. And you'll see there's this new field that's now at the very top. Now, just a quick note, you will want to make sure that you have those, um, you want to make sure that you have those uh, those pieces of information that are required on immediate and long-term records. You want to make sure that you have those ready. Um, you want to familiarize yourself with the intermediate and long-term annual record form because you'll need to know that information whenever you go to complete that, whenever you roll those trainees into um, the new um, trainee type. And so if you click on that, that'll immediately take me um, and to add a new record for them. And then you'll just want to make sure that you know um, all of those, um, all of that information on there. Uh, I wanted to pause for any questions, um, if, if we have any in the chat right now. There are no questions, but there are comments. So um, there's a comment that we do not collect information about our short-term trainees, only name and email address. So we don't add short-term trainee records. We count them on in the activities data set. 
Um, and then there's another comment that says that new field is a really nice feature. <laughs> so <laughs> hats off to Oksana and you, Brandon. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, that, that, that's a very good point too. This is something that we'll talk on day three a little bit about um, as far as what's the difference between whether or not I should enter them into the trainees data set um, or if they go into the activities data set. That's a really common question that I receive too. Um, and the trainees data set that I'm talking about right now, um, I just want to make a quick plug. Those are trainees that satisfy those requirements that are outlined in the NOFO. Um, at sometimes um, if you have just like one off, um, you know, like uh, uh, someone has um, participated um, in activity like a shadowing in your clinic or something like that, it's just a one time thing. And they maybe don't satisfy some of those other requirements that are outlined um, as you've been talking to your MCHB project officer um, and in the NOFO. Sometimes it's easier to capture those in the activities data set. And we can definitely talk about that a little bit more um, on day three. Um, I did want to check in. Um, does uh, Jackie or Xana have anything to add um, on, on, on that piece as well? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Have nothing to add. Okay. Well, as promised, um, I'm going to give everyone a five minute break because I think we're um, actually on schedule for to, to walk through trainee surveys. Um, and so I'm just going to give everyone another five minute break. Um, we'll come back um, around um, four or seven or so.
Okay, welcome back everyone from our short break again. We will go ahead and jump back in with trainee surveys. I'll go ahead and share my screen and ears again. So we just finished with talking about um, the three buckets of trainees and how to manage our long-term, our medium-term, and our short-term trainees. And now I want to talk about trainee surveys. Um, and so before we get, sorry, yeah, go right I ahead. Hate, I hate to interrupt, <laughs> but before we get to surveys, there is one question in the chat um, that's about trainees that uh, before we get into surveys may be helpful to answer. So okay. um, there's a question from Kelly saying, how do you handle it when a trainee withdraws from your program partway through a program year, and then they decide to come back and complete their traineeship in a different or future program year? This may also be a question for us <laughs> too. Um, that's a very good question. Um, I am actually going to try to field that one to Exana if she has any insight on that one, actually. Um, if you have any insight, I don't. I won't. I don't. I don't want to even. <laughs> I mean, um, from technical point of view, you may, and because you will be entering training with the same person at last name, you saw what happened to friend and try to do that. The system will push you. So you will make decision maybe add to the last name you you need trade two profiles pretty much one for previous years and one Oksana I hate to interrupt year. your audio is kind of distorted <laughs> and so folks are having oh. a really hard time hearing you okay I do my video so I would assume I would suggest we have two profiles uh, one and be sure that you don't that one will be distinguished from another. Add something to their last or first name that you can see them. Um, you can differentiate them in the list. So, Oksana. Yeah. <laughs> what what, what Oksana is saying, I think, is that um, you you'll still want to create. Um, the records for them. So whenever they're a trainee um, at, um, at, at, the, at the first time, you still want to create a record for them. And then whenever they come back in a future record, um, you want to create another annual record for them. And you'll just want to adjust their number of hours um, based on um, their involvement in, in the training program. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Because they were still a trainee at your training program, so you still want to record them. You just want to be very careful in which bucket you're placing in, the, them into. And then Kelly had um, asked what year do you survey, survey them for? Which I know we're getting into surveys. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, so um, we will, um, so if we have no other questions on um, managing the trainee records, um, then we will go ahead and jump into surveys then. I, I, I think we can wait for a Kelly's follow-up question until you go through the surveys, Brandon. I'll let you take it away. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. So um, I'll go ahead and answer that um, question right away. Um, we survey, uh, MCHB requests um, trainee surveys two, five, and 10 years post-completion of their training program. And so it always is the term, it's when they finish the training program, when, once they've finished but then it's two, five, and 10 years um, after they've finished, that's when you send those surveys. And that's actually a very common question um, that I receive as well. Um, you know, how do I know who needs to be surveyed? 
Um, and where do I find that information in NEARS? And there's actually some very helpful tools. Um, again, in NEARS, automatically populated for you. Um, because that's um, something that is always a very common question. Um, before I get to that, um, I just want to show you really quick um, again. Um, sorry, I think maybe I'm zoomed in a little too much. That's why it's not showing up. Okay, there we go. So I just want to show everyone again these survey instructions because this will be really important for this next um, talk that we're going to go through. Um, this next section, you want to make sure and the survey instructions that is linked at the top of each page in the trainees data set, um, you want to make sure that you're in the correct page. You want to make sure that you have this open because this will walk you through the process um, of how um, to survey trainees, how um, to send the survey um, link to them. It'll give you the survey link that you want to send to them. Um, this is just a really good tool um, for you to have I meant to empower yourself with as you're going through as we're going through this journey. If we're um, a use set and lend or, or if we're um, a, a lend um, program, we're going to make sure that we're on the right type. If we're um, a LIA program, we want to make sure we're on the right tab for that to make sure we're on the right survey. And then we're only going to scroll down and we're going to um, grab that link. Um, to go um, to their um, to 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 the survey, and we're just going to make sure we we note that. Um, we're also going to want to make sure um, that we note the program type for that trainee for MCHB training programs. Um, it's always going to be this first link. We're always going to send them um, the one for lend only or lend you said, or if we're a Leah, we're going to make sure we're in the right type, and we're going to make sure we send them. That um, that LIA survey link whenever we we do that. Um, and so just keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this next portion. Okay, so talking about that really cool um, report that we were that I was just talking about, where you find um, a lot of that information to find out who you're supposed to survey. Um, I like to um, consider this as like, you know, you, you have your list of your trainees that you need to survey. Um, and then you also have that list of trainees who have already sent you that. And so first I want to show you where you find that list of trainees that you're going to survey, um, which is actually a great time to be talking about this because this is the time of year um, around December to February is when we usually say, um, hey, go ahead and start looking at trainees and sending those surveys out. Um, and data coordinators will usually do that around this time of year. So this is a great time to be, or be talking about the trainees data set right now too. And so the report that I'm talking about, um, as we're looking at this, we have reports that are separated out again into all and then we have you said um, specific reports. And then what we're interested in is that um, standard reports that are grouped for lend layup PPCs and DBPs. Um, each of the trainee data set, I mean, each of the data sets, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, are um, grouped into these three sections whenever you go to the standard reports. There's a Trainee standard reports. I'm at the very bottom of the page under Lendlia PPC and DBP. Um, that's called Long Term Survey Info 2018 Plus. This is where I go for all of my survey needs. Um, this is the one that I point to everyone whenever they ask, "Who do I need to survey?" This report is amazing. It gives you all like most of the information that you need, except for their survey link. Um, and then their um, center uh, name that I'll, I'll point out to you um, here shortly and where to find that. Um, but this is where you can note um, just about all of the information that you'll need to know. A quick note that, um, again, standard reports are set up to where you can search for each year. And so um, whenever we are talking about surveying trainees, um, you just want to note this year that um, we are in, um, what year are we currently in that we are surveying our trainees. This report will automatically pull trainees who were at our training program 
two, five, and 10 years prior. And so whenever we're thinking about that in 2023, that'll be two years ago, this report will pull from 2021, five years ago, 2018, and then 10 years ago, um, 2013. It automatically does that for us. And you'll see here just what I said, 2013, 10 years ago, 2018, five years ago, and then 2021, two years ago. And we ran that again um, because we're in the current fiscal year, 2023. Um, and so um, that's a really nice feature. It just automatically does that for us. And so what we're looking for, we know that trainees um, for MCHB, MCHB is interested in long-term trainees um, and, and so that we know who to send the survey to. We can double check that we've run it for the correct year at the very top, it lists the fiscal year. A brief description at the very top of the page so that we have an idea of, of what information is being displayed on here. Um, and then I'm looking here, I'm making sure that these years line up with two, five and 10 years ago. As I scroll down, that checks out. So, okay, we're in the right set of information. I'm looking for long-term trainees, that's under type. L means long-term, and so my eye is automatically gonna, going to go straight for trainees that say L next to their type. I'm going to note their trainee, their type of trainee, if they're a lender, you said, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, which link am I sending that to them whenever I'm looking at the survey instructions? I'm seeing their contact information here. This is kind of a strategic decision. How best do you want to contact your trainees? Um, and we can go through that a little bit more here in a second. I just want to get through um, the standard report. Um, and so you can kind of pick and choose which contact information. And then you also want to give them their login password, which is the survey login here. And so you'll see that this report has all of that information that they need here. Um, and this is just a really good place to look at um, for, um, for, for um, finding all of that information all in one place. Okay, so are there any questions about that? Brandon, I don't see any comments in the chat. Um, so if folks have questions, you can add them to the chat now or you can unmute. And I just see a comment that just was added. So this report is a great start to the survey process. One thing to note is that the trainees come up based on their FY fiscal year of their last annual record, which might not be when you want to survey them. Our understanding is that when we want to survey them two, five, and 10 years after their long-term, after their long-term LEND training year. So we double check it against our records of graduates for each fiscal year. And that is um, a great point now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's always good to double check just to make sure. Um, it's always good to double check against your own records just in case um, as a tip from um, seasoned data coordinators. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I'm going to continue on. Um, the next question that I received that's most um, all commonly asked is that I see that surveys are password protected. That's because NIRS will assign each trainee um, their own survey login password that's unique to them. Where can I find that password? Uh, well, um, there's actually two places that you can find that. There's in this standard report that's all in one place for you, like I just like I just showed you. Um, I'm going to show you another place where that is, and so I'm going to go back in here, and I'm just going to show that to you really quick. 
And so I'm going to go back and remember, we're looking at long term trainees. Um, and so I'm just going to go and um, find that trainee really quick. Um, and I'm just going to show you from an earlier example. Um, you can go back in and um, view that in their trainee record. It's at the very bottom of their main record. And so you can see their trainee survey login um, that's um, listed at the very bottom of the main record, the trainee's main record. It's a great question. It's okay. So. Okay, so um, now I think would be a great time um, to jump over um, to the PowerPoint um, slides really quick, um, just to kind of summarize the information um, that we've discussed so far. Um, can everyone see my screen right now on the slides? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Oh my goodness, what happened? Brandon, I believe it's my screen that's being shared. Not oh, me. is it? Okay, yes. okay. <laughs> I'll stop sharing so that um, Rachel can, um, if you wouldn't mind um, flicking through a little bit um, so that. Um, because we wanna be, um, on the um, uh, export import. I think we've um, maybe gone too far. Uh, one, one before, right there. Okay, perfect. Sorry, one, one more back. <laughs> okay. So, um, as we've already talked about, sorry, I just want to recap really quickly. On screen are the required fields that we've talked about so far. Um, these are the um, requirements that are included in the NEARS export and port. Um, and then now we're talking about the surveys. And so this is just a really good resource for you to go back to um, as you're going through. Um, and then um, go ahead and go to the um, next um, form. So now that we're talking about um, surveys, um, MCHB is going to look for whether or not they could be contacted for the survey, yes or no. They're going to look for their employee setting. Um, they're going to look for their current address information. And then there are um, five questions specifically that are outlined in the trainee surveys that are sent to them. Um, and we can walk through um, uh, the process of um, entering into the trainee survey together so you can kind of see what that looks like. But these are the questions on the form that your trainees will see whenever they go to complete the survey. Um, and you wanna make sure that that information is as um, complete as possible. Um, and so um, I'll uh, kind of let everyone review those a little bit. Um, and so, and then I just kind of wanted to show that if you would go um, two slides on Rachel. Okay, and then back um, to what we're talking about. This is another really um, helpful slide for you. Um, what is the information that you will need to collect like we just talked about that's on that standard report that we just went through? What do you need to know before surveying your trainees? Um, you'll need to find um, the name of your program. Um, you'll need to find the survey link in the survey instructions. Um, and then those other two pieces of information, you'll need to know their contact information. And you'll need to know their trainee password that's also on that standard report. Um, and then we've also um, supplied for the homework survey links for the test environment um, and again, this is for the test environment and the survey instructions, um, that is for the live environment. That's what you'll actually send to trainees whenever you're doing this um, in the, the new reporting year. And so just so you know where to find that information, um, all of those tools are at your fingertips. And then whenever you're emailing trainees, again, you'll wanna send them the name of your program um, as it is listed in NEARS, you want to send them the survey link 
um, so that they can get to the survey. You want to send them their unique password because the survey is password protected. And then you also want to send them um, the um, a deadline for the survey um, because um, you know we're all um, trying to get everything in um, by a certain date. Um, and so you want to make sure that you send them with plenty of time for them to do their surveys. And so we've given you an outline of just a sample email that you can send to your trainees. Um, uh, Rachel, if you would go back one slide. Um, I've just kind of drafted one for you so you can kind of have that um, as an example. You can make whatever changes that you need to for your own program um, and your needs. Okay, go ahead and do the next one, Rachel. Thank you. Um, and so I'm just going to uh, demo that in NEARS really quick. I'm going to take back the screen share. Um, that's for um, an overview. And then now I'm actually going to show you um, what all of that looks like. Okay, is everyone able to see NEARS? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, just for example, I'm already on their page, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab um, that password just so I can show everyone. And then um, I'm going to go to the survey instructions. I'm going to click on that survey, and this is what it'll look like whenever your whenever your trainees go to complete the survey. This is the same page that they come to. Um, they, again, this is the reason why you need to send them the center name. I'm going to go back to NEARS, and you'll see that that is located at the very top ribbon in NEARS. You want to send them um, just, uh, you can just copy and paste this. Um, it's at the top of every page. And so whenever your trainee goes to do the survey, they're going to enter that information for us. We're in the test center. I'm going to select that, and then I'm just going to copy and paste that um, link that was sent, and that's going to take me into the survey. You'll notice that they can update their contact information here. That information is automatically updated whenever they complete the survey, which is another really neat feature in NEARS. Um, they can um, enter all this information, and it'll automatically populate in their main record once they save the survey. It'll ask them for their current place of employment, which is, again, another thing that MCHB is looking for. And they'll ask for their current um, position. Um, and so um, I'm just going to demo this really quickly. OK, and then um, they can update. Um, their information in here um, for a name of a family contact. Um, and so I'm just going to put um, a um, random person. I'm going to use uh, my colleague Oksana just to say an example um, and then um, just to fill in that information. Um, and then um, you can do race and ethnicity, which is, again, information that MCHV is looking for, um, and then they can make their um, selection. These questions will look familiar uh, from what we just talked about. Um, this is one of those five questions that um, are required um, and that MCHV is looking for. Does your current work re relate to MCH populations? Um, and um, they'll kind of make their selections as they go through this. I'm just going to make um, those selections just to kind of um, go through the example really quick um, as we go through this. And again, these will be actual responses. Um, this is just for um, the um, and just for the um, sake of showing it um, to everyone. And then once I save the screen, it's like, thank you, survey completed. Um, if they, for some reason, uh, didn't fill out a uh, question, I'll ask them to fill it out. Um, it automatically will, will do that for you. OK, so next question, what happens and when they submit that? Where does that information go? 
in years. And you can see trainees that have submitted their trainees. These are the ones that um, and they've already completed it. And that's in trainees data set list survey. This is where you can see the surveys that have already been completed and you'll see that my name is listed under here that we just completed. You'll see the day that it was completed. Um, you can, and then you can kind of click into the record if you want to, or you can click on their survey to see their responses. Um, and I'll go ahead and click on it just to show you. And these are the same responses that we just gave. Um, it's automatically linked in, in NEARS based on their selections on this page. Okay, any questions on that? Brandon, I haven't seen any questions, but Kelly shared a fabulous tip. <laughs> um, so Kelly shared to see if my user defined questions show up in the trainee survey, I've created a bookmark to the URL for the trainee survey, and then I can just bring it up, pop in a trainee login password, and then scroll down to see if our user defined questions show up. Beautiful tip. Yep, that, that is fantastic. Thank you. And that's, yeah, okay. So you guys got it. <laughs> um, okay, so. Okay, so is that the only question that we have in the chat right now? That was the only comment. Uh, okay. No other questions. Okay. Okay. So then um, I will also add in another tip too. Um, just as your process goes, after you've sent the trainee survey, you can check back on both of those lists, that standard report, long-term survey info 2018 plus. Check back on that periodically and then also check back in list survey. That this list will tell you the ones that you've received and then you can compare that other list um, with the trainees that you've yet to receive. And then that way you can be sure that you have everyone and who you need to still follow up with. Okay. So um, I just want to also put in a quick note for USED and LEND programs. Um, since your uh, program includes both trainees from USED and LEND, you want to be very, very careful on which survey link that you give to your trainees. And that's why I say you want to be really careful. You want to note that's long-term survey info. You want to note that whenever you're in that standard report. You want to note if they're a LEND or a USED. For programs who are both LEND and USED, I do want to also note that there is a report specifically for USED programs, and you actually want to use both because the, the first one under LEND, LEA, PPC, and DBP, that one will note all of all, all, all where they are LEND or LEND USED. It's not going to capture um, your USED trainees, but this is the, the one that you'll want to use for MCHB reporting, for reporting to ACL, which is the USED federal funder. Um, you want to make sure that you're using the other one because that'll capture your trainees who are USED only. Okay. And again, that's for um, program types that are you said and lend both. So do we have any questions on the differences between those two? I don't wanna um, you know, just make sure that if you're um, a training, um, an MCHB training program, um, that you're using the correct um, standard report um, for MCHB reporting. 
Brandon, there is a question in the chat. Um, well, there's a comment first that says the survey completed date also shows up in the long-term survey report, 2018 plus. Um, so just to note that. And then there is a question that says, fair to assume there are no, are you sure you want to send this type prompts when you're setting up the email? There's none. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm just, I'm just wanting to clarify on the question. Um, so whenever you're sending the uh, the email, um, uh, no, are, are you asking? No, thanks, Brent. I, you know, what I'm asking is you said you want to be really sure you're sending the right link. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just checking to see if like the system helps you with that or you really just need to kind of go back and forth and triple check. Uh, you really just need to be really sure because um, a sense of that, I mean, whenever you send them the survey trainee, I mean, the, the trainee survey, um, that a process, I mean, that that email, um, you know, that email process is kind of sent outside of NEARS. And so there is really no way for us to kind of create that, that check in there, if that makes sense. Thanks. It's a great question. Okay, so um, I am then um, going to uh, give everyone another five minute break then and we'll come back at 4.45.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, so now we've um, gone through trainee surveys. Uh, there is like what uh, Oksana talked about, um, there is a second kind of survey um, that we're now gonna go over. Um, Rachel, if you wouldn't mind going back to the previous slide. Um, we actually want the one on the mini on the mini context survey. Perfect, thank you. Um, so there is another uh, type of cont uh, survey which is um, used to update contact information. Um, this is um, can be it is not required to use the annual update. Um, however, we do find that those who the programs that use the update. Um, are find it much easier to contact their trainees whenever they uh, go to survey them. Um, and so their, response, their survey response rates are actually much higher um, whenever they use it. Um, and trainees get used to um, having that contact point every year. They know to look for your email um, and they'll, they'll know that um, they'll, they'll be surveyed um, every two, five and 10 years. Um, we've supplied um, the uh, links to both of those for both the live environment, whenever you're doing this for real, um, if you choose to, um, and then for the test environment, um, if you would like to test that um, with homework um, or on your own time. Um, the survey forms, again, are the same regardless of your program or center type. Um, they're, I mean, it's all standardized across um, everyone, um, regardless of which type of program you are. Leah's will see the same thing, um, PPCs will see the same thing, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to steal the share screen really quick and then we'll go into custom reports. There was one more standard report that I wanted to um, talk through everyone really quick, um, which I find really, really helpful. Um, if you remember, we had a couple of questions about, um, you know, if, if we need to um, create multiple records, you know, how do I know um, if I, I want to double check that a trainee um, has a long term and a medium record, um, and if there's another duplicate, um, uh, or if they have, um, you know, like what combination of records do they have existing? There's a trainee standard report under all that's trainee duplicates, which can be really helpful uh, for data cleaning. If you run that report, it'll list all trainees that have multiple names entered into the database. Now, just a quick note about this standard report. It will note um, all uh, records um, that are duplicate, regardless of whether or not um, they're long-term, medium-term, or um, short-term. Uh, earlier, we said it's okay if they have a long-term or medium-term and a short-term in the system. But whenever they have two main records associated with their, with their annual record, that's whenever um, they're a duplicate. Um, and so you can check here again that um, if I go in here, I'll see that, um, you know, uh, what, what, what type of record is entered into here. I can click on their name um, and that'll be um, right there for me to just double check. Um, and I have a couple of extra um, screens open, so I'm just going to go and close those really quick um, again, and, and then I can just go through here and I can check again for Andrea. Um, I can note that um, it's a, a duplicate main record or, um, you know, maybe I need to make some corrections somewhere. Okay. And then um, I did also just want to note again, um, that trainees are set up in the same way um, as with the directory data set. If you're looking for a specific trainee, um, my advice would be to go to trainees advanced search. Up here again, um, it starts with fiscal year um, and then their trainee type if they're long-term, medium-term, short-term. Um, 
My advice, if you're looking for any trainee that might have existed at your training program um, for long-term trainees, and you just want to double check just to be on the safe side that they don't already exist, you can search for all years. You can exit out all of, of all of the other selections to just select all years. We're looking for long-term, medium-term trainees. If you want to, um, if you're interested in a specific um, discipline or you know what their discipline in, you can add that in here as well. Funding sources, um, if they um, were given any stipend or other tuition, you can also search by that. For our example, I'm going to search for all um, um, all uh, trainees with the last name. Again, for, for trainees, this is set up in a similar way to how directory data set was. It's going to note uh, the uh, database or the, um, the field that it, what, what data set that it was, um, that, that the field is from. Um, trainee means that it was um, from their, um, uh, from their trainee main record. You'll see there's a few more options here than we saw in the directory data set last time as we scroll down. Uh, and there's also year, which means that it comes from their annual record. Um, there's um, survey, which means that it comes um, from the um, LEND um, survey. Um, and then there's also um, you said um, that will also be from the, from the you said trainee. So you just wanna make sure that, that you note um, that you want to be careful in which one you um, select from these options because um, we, we have separate ones for the surveys. Um, since with the um, way that uh, you know federal funders sometimes have the uh, different questions that they are wanting to ask about, their surveys are also set up differently, um, which is why it's very important that you send the correct type of a trainee survey link whenever you send that to them because those questions will be different depending on which type of survey that they're sent. Okay, so um, for our example, I'm gonna go uh, trainee, last name mean that it's the last name on um, their trainee main record. And then in parentheses, it'll have uh, the field type, T means text. So they know that uh, that's a text field. And then I'm going to pick like, and then I'm just going to um, put in the last name um, for the trainee in the third box. Like is a very nice selection here um, because it will return all uh, text fields that are similar regardless of, uh, regardless of spelling. And then I'm just going to collect search. And you'll see that it comes back with all your records regardless. Um, and I can see that they already have a main record. And then I can just add um, a year record. Um, and so that's um, an, an another tip that I will um, give everyone as well um, to search for those trainees um, whenever you're going to add them in 10 years. Okay. Do we have any questions in the chat, Jackie? There are no questions. Um, there's a, a comment from earlier, which was more so um, regarding, essentially, it would be nice to be able to automate the list from long-term training years so we don't have to weed it out in regards to the standard report. Um, so that's just, a, that's just a note for us to maybe bring to data coordinators in the future. But no other questions on what you're um, what you're referencing. Okay. Yeah, um, and that, that's a, a a good suggestion. So thank you for that. Um, you know, we're always willing to um, you know kind of take your feedback um, and uh, make improvements where um, we, we always get together and um, re review all, all suggestions that everyone gives throughout the year. So thank you. Okay. So. Now here's the, the big one, um, trainees custom reports. Um, this is where um, you can make your own reports. Um, you wanna first be sure that a standard report, um, you can kind of explore the other ones that we didn't talk about today. Um, but if you don't find the information that you're looking for, you can come to custom reports and kind of uh, make your own um, based on what information you're interested in looking for. 
Um, again, these are separated out into different categories. We recommend that you um, create a category based on um, your query just so that it's easier to find at a later time. Um, and so um, the very first thing that we're going to do, we're going to come up with a question that we're going to ask before we start creating um, this custom report. In our example, we're going to use the question, what foreign languages are our trainees speaking? And so I have already created one for us just so I can talk through it um, really quick. Um, and it's this one. So I'm going to go and um, just edit it really quick just so I can talk through it really quick. Um, you see that I've created a title, a unique title, so that I can find it again next time. I've created a category for it. Um, and then for options, um, I have created a couple of new options here. Um, I've created distinct and full memos um, so that I can see um, each of those distinct categories. Um, and then I want full descriptions for each of those. Selected fields. Um, and I guess um, the first one that will come after that is notes. You can make notes to yourself here if you want to, just so if you want to um, make sure that you know um, what, that stand, what that custom report is about, um, you can um, note that for whenever you come back to it later. Selected fields are the pieces of information, the pieces of data that are present on the online form that will be included in the report. Pieces of, um, they're on the left side of the screen. These are all the options that are present on the form. Um, again, trainee from their main record, um, short term if they're a short term trainee, year if they're um, from the annual record, and then their survey, depending on um, which survey they're from, they'll have a different type. Um, and then the field that exists on that form. And then again, the field type in parentheses. You can select these um, arrows to go left and right. On the left side of the screen, those are the ones that are included and that will appear in the report whenever we run it. In our example, I've included fiscal year because I want to know what year those trainees were um, uh, a trainee at our training program. I've included the, um, if they're a LIN trainee, yes or no. I've included the trainee type, um, which may be a little bit redundant for us, but I just wanted to create an extra layer um, just so I can show the different types, their first name, last name, and then that field we're most interested in, language other than English. Selection criteria are how we want to refine those pieces of data um, in our report. So for fiscal year, I'm looking for well, the types of foreign languages from all trainees, regardless of year. So I'm going to select year for their uh, annual record, not blank, because I just want to make sure that that is not blank on the form, I want to make sure that that's filled in, and then I'm going to leave that third form blank. I'm going to select and here because I want and these other criteria. Um, and then I am going to select year trainee type, um, and then I want to specify long-term trainees. And then for the last criteria, LEND, LEND trainees equals yes. And then I'm going to go through down on the page. Sort and group by can be a really nice and helpful tool here um, because you can note if you want to ascend ascending or descending in the order. And then this next box down below, you can move which fields you want to sort by um, by moving them again into the left, sorry, the right side of the screen. You'll notice that on the right side in this last box, I'm sorry, on the left side, 
Um, these are all of the fields that we've selected up here in selected fields. You'll notice that same list exists. Um, and so I'm gonna move that one back over here just so you can see that that matches with this list. And then now if I want to sort by, I can move that over. And then save the screen once I've finished my selections. And now we can find that back into the category um, that we put it into. You can click on these plus and minus signs. Uh, we put it into trainees. I'm sorry, it's trainees with an S for um, the test center. Um, and then we can find that on the, in the um, drop down, pre present results and I'm going to select browser. You can also choose to download that straight onto your computer, but I just want to put that into a browser. We run our reports and make any edits under manage with those three dots, and then we select run. Going to put that into full view, and then we can see the results of our query. Um, again, I just want to put in a quick note just in the last time. I want to make sure that it's showing all records. So I'm going to go up here next to record count. I can see it's more than 50. So I'm just going to enter that number and then click, click refresh. OK, so that's an example on how to create um, a custom report in the trainees data set. Okay, um, I'm going to go back over to our slides really quick because I just want to share um, some really quick tips whenever you're building in um, custom reports that I find really helpful. Rachel, if we could please put that up. Thank you. Um, as you're going through the custom report, you want to ask yourself a couple of questions and just take these into account whenever you're building this. You want to ask yourself, what do you want to capture in the custom report? You want to start simple, um, and then you want to break that question up into simple, actionable steps to help guide your process. If it helps you and you're a visual person, you can even write that down um, on a piece of paper and then break that up so that it's easier for you to see. And then you want to begin with testing those selected fields. Again, those selected fields are the list of questions that are online form that you want to include in the report. And then you um, can ask yourself, what data points will help me verify the data that I match to? Um, and my, and my um, suggestion would be to include those same fields in with selected fields as well, because that'll help you verify that the information that you're pulling is correct and accurate. And then once that is all said and done, um, it may also help to have NEARS open in a different browser like Chrome and Firefox or Microsoft Edge so that you can compare those questions in the online form with selected fields and selection criteria just to make sure that you are making the correct options and that everything is accurate. And then lastly, make sure you save. Make sure you save, because it doesn't do that automatically. You want to make sure that you save, and then you can run your report. If you need to make corrections, that's OK. Um, you know, we are here to help, too, if you get stuck. Um, um, I will share that I rarely get my this is result that I want the first time, so it's okay if you need to go back through and make any corrections if it's not what you expected whenever you run the report. Okay, do we have any questions? I don't see any questions yet, so you can add those okay. to the chat or unmute if you do have questions. And I also just wanted to know, I, custom reports uh, for me at UCD have always been the hardest. Um, I know that sometimes they're not easy. And so just as Brendan noted in the very beginning, you do have TA support. So if you're trying, we, we do get lots of TA questions of, this is what I'm trying to find out. And I know it's possible through the custom report, but I'm just not able to get it to where I want. 
Um, that's where Oksana and Brandon are really great at answering all your questions and helping you with those custom reports. I know it's not easy at first and it takes lots of practice before you feel comfortable making different custom reports, whether it's through the trainees or a different data set. So I just wanted to note that TA is available for that if you need assistance. And exactly. Akana and Brandon, feel free to jump in if you have any comments on that. But I know that's those are some common questions we get. Yeah. No, I absolutely love it. Practice makes perfect. Um, you know, I I I, I am also um, you know newer uh, to NEARS, being a new hire at AUCD. Started about seven months ago. I certainly did not get this on my first try. Um, and so, um, you know, just kind of give yourself some space. Um, you know, it's you you'll you'll get the hang of it um, through through practice, um, and um, we are more than happy to help in any way that we can too. Brandon, I don't see any questions coming in, so I think you're good to move good forward. To okay, awesome. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and steal the screen from you again, Rachel. <laughs> um, so um, the next two things that I just want to note, um, there are two tools that I want to run through really quick. Um, we touched on these last time. Um, I just want to um, remind everyone that there are, you manage user-defined fields. Um, you can create custom fields in all of the data sets, uh, oh, sorry, all, all of the forms that we talked about today. Um, these are used primarily for um, your own tracking. You know, if you um, have something um, at your program, data coordinators came to us a number of years ago and said, hey, you know, I want something to give back to my program. I want something that's meaningful to me. Um, this is a great way to do it. And so in years, you need administrative access in order to create these fields at your program, but you can go to admin, manage user defined fields. And then um, a quick tip that I'll put over here is that over here on the show, you can expand it out because you'll notice that it's on several different pages. There's 12 different pages. So my advice would just to click into all. And then that'll put all of them onto one page for you so that it's easier for you to look through. It'll say where, which data set am I going into? And so you can just kind of scroll through or you can do control find and just go to trainee. Um, and then you can go on down the page and you can see that I know short trainee, um, short term, or you can go for trainee or um, annual records, so on and so forth. If you want to add a new uh, uh, user-defined field, you can click on the three dots and then just click Edit. That'll take you into the form. You want to put in how you want that uh, field to appear on the form. Um, and so you can just kind of um, you know, create however, um, whatever is best for your program. Um, and then uh, kind of note whatever your selections are. Again, each of these selections should be on a different field. You can make that field required, which means that it will not be saved. Uh, so you, you cannot save the form without filling that question out. If you click required, inactive means that it will not show up on the form. So if you want it active, you want to make sure that it's not selected. And then if you want to show that um, on the mini survey, then you can. Okay. And then the last tool that I want to um, run through, I'm going to um, show you how to use, there's a really cool tool that you can use in NEARS that's called the quick email tool. And we're gonna switch back over to the PowerPoint slides so that we can talk about that. And then I'll show that in years really quick. Okay. So the quick email tool is a really nice tool that you can use to email your trainees straight in years. 
um, it's complete with um, a field that you can use to um, CC yourself or near as administrator who can help with any questions um, and also to assist with follow up in case if uh, maybe they have any questions or maybe they didn't respond the first time. Um, and so um, it's a really quick and easy way to respond to trainees in bulk um, if you would get that initial survey out there to your trainees. Um, and then you can also create a list of instructions um, and what's called the content field. And I'll show that here just in a second. Um, I just want to quick, a quick note though, um, that email sent from the quick email tool will come from nears at AUCD.org. And so they may not be easily recognizable um, by your trainees, which is why it's really, really helpful to CC someone on that email um, who can be a contact person at your training program. Um, because sometimes those emails can be sent to a spam box um, or um, maybe it might be missed in their inbox so they may not see it. Do you want to go to the next? Okay. So um, we provide that for as a resource on the slides for you as well, but I'm going to show that um, how that can be used in NEARS. Um, I'm going to go back to the trainee search. Um, and then just to kind of um, demo this, I know that in 2023, we're surveying uh, from two, five, and 10 years ago. So I'm thinking um, from 2021. Um, 2018 and 2021. And then I'm just going to make sure I specify long term, medium term, and I'm just going to press search in the advanced search. That'll bring up all trainees um, that were trainees at your training program um, that, show, that showed up in that standard report that we talked about earlier. This is, should be the Brandon, same list. Yes. You're not sharing your screen. Yep. Yeah. Am I not sharing my screen? I am so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll back up just a second, just so I can show that again. Um, so what I did here on the trainees advanced search is that um, I selected from two, five, and 10 years ago. We're in 2023, so I'm selecting two, five, two years ago, 2021, five years ago, 2018, and then 2013, 10 years ago. And then trainee type, long-term, medium-term. I mean, that's all that I'm interested in finding. So I'm just going to click search. OK, and so you might have seen this as we've been demoing this throughout the day, but there's this really nice tool on the side of the screen. It says quick email tool. You can CC your faculty or staff member on here um, and here's administrative person. You can create the subject line and then you can input any of the content um, that you um, would like to enter um, and how they should complete that survey. And then over here on the side of the screen, you can see that um, we are that we can select select recipient recipients of quick email and I can pick and choose which trainees that I need to send that email tool for who need to be surveyed and you can have that um, a trainee uh, long term survey info standard report open in a different tab. Um, if you need to, you can go there first and then search for that in the advanced search and then you can kind of draft your email here. There's different options uh, to preview um, that email. And so I'm just going to um, test survey. And then um, you can kind of preview that. It'll um, give you an outline for how that'll look whenever that's sent. And then you can press email once you're ready for it to go out. Um, and then that is um, an overview of the quick email tool, how you can send in bulk um, trainees um, that will need to be surveyed at your program. I wanna pause here for any questions before we go into homework. Brandon, I don't see any questions. Do folks? Oh, I see. One just came in. Is there currently any way to send five, 10 year survey emails via NEARS? Uh, Oksana, feel free to jump in since I already see you. <laughs> no. 
Hope hope everybody can hear me now. No, currently there is no way to send those uh, emails from NIRS, directly from NIRS. Um, and so that, that that's a great point. That's why um, you want to make sure that that contact information is as complete as possible in their main record, because that's how you're going to contact your trainees. I um, mean, that's again a internal process. How what is the easiest way um, for you to contact them? Um, I've heard um, some data coordinators getting very creative with it. Um, an, an example of a user to find fields um, actually um, that I'm just thinking about um, would be to create a social media question um, in the uh, trainee's main record where you can note um, like maybe their Facebook page or something along those lines that would be a really neat way to use NEARS that I don't think uh, many programs are using it right now. It's a great question. I don't see any other questions. And this doesn't have to be necessarily about the survey if there's other questions from the training data set overall, because once Brandon reviews the homework, um, we'll end today's boot camp session. All right, I don't hear anyone and I don't see any more coming into the chat. So Brandon, I think you're you're good to uh, talk about the homework. Okay, so thank you so much. Okay, so I know it's been a lot of information that we've gone over in today's bootcamp. Um, don't worry, we are here to help. Um, we have TA sessions again on Thursday and Monday. Um, you got those um, invite links and we've also have them on the slides for you. Um, we'll send out the slides again through the uh, listserv um, so that you have them after the session. Homework is again, completely optional. It is up to you if you would like uh, to do those, um, but it is a great opportunity for you to receive feedback. Um, and of course, we um, encourage any questions at nears at AUCD.org um, or at the TA sessions. Um, it doesn't have to be just about today's bootcamp session. Um, if you have any questions on anything at all NEARS related, we're happy to help. So to go into um, the homework um, on the um, technical side, we will also, um, we also gave everyone a link to the test center so that you can practice these questions um, on in a very safe environment so that you're not affecting anyone's um, real data used in federal reporting. Okay, and so the very first question that we're going to ask about in the homework is to help you um, get experience with finding the trainee section in the data dictionary and provided a link for it so that you know you're in the right place. Go ahead and go into the next slide. Second question is going to be to have hands-on experience with adding a long-term trainee record with a main record and then two annual records in 2022 and 2023. And we've kind of walked you through that process. And I provide an example um, for everyone um, that is already um, that, that, that so that you can see whatever it will look like um, and, the, and whenever you complete that correctly. Homework question number three. Um, this one um, is going to be just to give you experience with what we walk through today. Um, Whenever you complete this, uh, this uh, question, um, you wanna add a new main record for brand new trainee, um, and then you want to save that, that screen. This will be a different trainee that you worked on in the previous question. Whenever you go to complete their annual record, do not save. You do not want to save that question, that, that form. You just want to close the browser. Um, and that's what I ran into earlier. That's why I didn't end up correctly because I forgot to start a brand new and main record. Um, and so uh, you just want to make sure that you do that. And then you'll note that they're not on that manage screen in years. Whenever you go back to find it again, you'd be like, where did they come from? And then, I mean, we're like, where did they go? I'm sorry. And that's when you'll go to the trainee data errors and the standard reports, find them, 
make those corrections and then um, you can make sure that you have um, saved that correctly and you'll find them on the list again um, in the manage trainees, uh, manage long-term, medium-term screen. I mean, let me know if anyone wants me to demo that really quick, um, if that um, did, did not make sense. Um, I um, will go ahead and go through the other uh, two questions really quick, um, and then we'll go to questions. Um, and then the fourth question um, will be using the info um, that you just entered into the long-term trainee list. Um, you want to grab just a, a, a trainee um, from the long-term survey info 2018 plus of standard report, and then draft an email um, and then I just include that information in there for the trainee. Um, again, don't actually send this email, just draft it. Um, it'll be used for the next question. And then uh, this is just to get you hand, the, for you to get hands on experience with actually submitting um, the uh, survey as if you were the trainee, um, just so you um, know what that process will look like if your trainees ask you any questions. Then go ahead and continue on. Um, and that is the last question on the homework. Um, we've provided office TA hours. Um, and so we look forward to seeing everyone um, for uh, day, uh, day two office hours on Thursday and Monday. Um, and if you would please um, give us any feedback on today's um, session, and we just pop that link into the chat. Um, again, we're always looking for ways to improve, um, and, and we welcome any feedback that you have on today's session. Um, I personally want to thank everyone for all of your amazing questions. Um, it's one of the best part about um, these sessions is that we get to talk as a group and work through um, some of the questions that we have together. Um, and we look forward to seeing everyone um, for day three of the boot camp. Uh, we'll be on the call for the next 10 minutes or so um, in case if anyone has any questions.